Hello and welcome back to another video. I start my videos every morning with a cup of coffee because they get me pumped up for videos and coffee is so good. Today I will be talking about the eight books I read this month. Eight, that is the most I've read in so long. Okay, two were audiobooks, but I still count that as reading. It was a story that I consumed with one of my five senses. If I could read Braille, that's another sense I could read with. I don't wanna be too washed out because I hate watching videos where the person is so contrasty, like their face is so white that I have to wear sunglasses to watch their videos. And I'm already pale. So with lots of ado, let's get into the books. The first book I read this month was a physical book and I don't have it with me because it was so bad that I got rid of it. And this book was A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell. Before I hate on the characters and the plot and the synopsis and the book and the prose and everything, let me tell you what the book's about. Three main characters, Stephanie, Emily, and Sean. This book follows three main characters. It starts off with Stephanie. Her character was so bad that I have a running joke now with Doug that, oh my god, that girl is such a Stephanie. She's the one with a mom blog who uses the blog to kind of ask people to help her find her friend Emily, who was missing. So there's Emily, who is missing. And there's Sean, who is Emily's husband, who is so brainless, who goes along with everything, who doesn't actually seem like a real person. I still think he's a robot. I did pick this book up in preparation for the movie. I saw that the movie was coming out, I found out there's a book, and I wanted to see Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively be their beautiful selves. I think this is the first time that I have ever read a book in preparation for the movie, and then the book was so bad that it thwarted me from going to see the movie. Stephanie was annoying and had relations with every male character in the book who was of age. Emily was a complete B-word who did what she wanted, who treated Sean like crap, who disappears for her reasons. And then there's Sean, who is not actually human. I don't want to spoil too much, but it was just a pointless read for me. The second book I read this month, actually, books two and three are audiobooks. So book two was Strange the Dreamer by Lanny Taylor, narrated by Steve West. I have talked about how much I loved this audiobook in a previous video, and everyone kind of knows what Strange the Dreamer is about, so I won't really go too in-depth with it. I will admit that Strange the Dreamer was one of those books that Booktube made me read. The hype on Booktube sold it for me. I was like, this has to be good, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna read this book. I'm also a sucker for British narrators, so I got the audiobook after having found out that it's narrated by a beautiful voice. As soon as I finished this audiobook, I found out that the same guy narrates Music Nightmares that comes out October 2nd, so I pre-ordered that. Book number three was another audiobook. I listened to Keep Her Safe by Sophie Hanna. This book was sort of another dud for me. Halfway a dud, halfway okay tolerable. Kara is our main character and she lives in the UK. But then she finds out she is unexpectedly pregnant and she kind of has this little freak out and gets on a plane to Arizona. <laughs> I sense movement behind me. This little detail about the book, it's the catalyst for why she is in the circumstance that lets her find this girl Melody in the hotel room, um, but it really never comes up again. It's like, oh, she's pregnant, but it really doesn't come up again until like the end when they resolve their issues or whatever. I sort of had a problem with UK Kara coming to the US and being British and narrating it in this accent and then trying to narrate the dialogue of all of the other American people, like everyone else is American but her. So when she is this narrator, when she's voicing the other American characters, I just kept hearing these slip ups. Her accent would just crack a little bit as she was saying, like certain words had letters that didn't need to be in them. <laughs> The main premise of this book is Melody. She is missing, she is gone, she's probably murdered, and this UK Kara happens upon her. She flies to this random hotel in Arizona where she is exhausted from her flight. She goes up the elevator, lift, to her room. She opens the door and it's already occupied by a man and a little girl. I believe that the summary says she recognizes the little girl right away, but she does not. She is so exhausted she goes back down and asks for another room because she just wants to crash. The secretary, Rhonda, at the front desk is like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that, oh my gosh. I'm... And then there's an American narrator, Bonnie Juno, who is this TV hostess, interviewer lady who's interviewing people surrounding this case of this missing girl, Melody. And there are instances when Bonnie Juno's character voices Patrick, Kara's British husband, and she can't do that. It's, she slips up on the British and it's just, it kept taking me out of the story. So for this reason, I would highly recommend reading the physical book. You might like that a little bit more than the audiobook. It might be easier to follow. And I did really enjoy the psychological aspect of the whole child thing towards the end. I don't want to spoil it in case you do end up reading it, but let's just say parents 
are not always nice. Book number four I read this month and the first physical book I can actually hold up and show you was Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. So our not so lucky main character is Tiffany. She is newly engaged and planning her wedding but she's kind of engaged to a guy who's boring and she wants more excitement out of her relationship. But they're both really rich so <laughs> They have a pretty, pretty steady life. Tiffany is an editor at a magazine, and the beginning kind of starts out naming all these fancy brand names, and she goes to these fancy restaurants, and I'm not really relating to it because who is rich these days? But the book starts hinting at Tiffany's horrible past, specifically a big thing that happened to her when she was going to this prestigious Bradley school. She works out, she boxes, she doesn't really eat enough, she's this really tiny, skinny, petite girl, woman, who's been hardened by this tragic past. The book eventually does tell you that she was sexually assaulted by three boys. But as the book goes along, she's confronted by this person who wants to do this film documentary thing about what happened at the Bradley school. So you're thinking, what happened? And they want to interview her and some teachers, and you're thinking, is this just the sexual assault? Like, what else happened? It is heavily implied that they're talking about something else, something bigger. It is annoying when the book is like hinting at this big reveal, this big thing, and not telling you. It's just one of those hooks that makes sure that the author is keeping the reader reading. I did only give this a three star out of five because I kind of predicted what they were talking about, what they were hinting at. I felt it was kind of obvious they're talking about a big tragic thing that happened in the school. Like, what else could it be? <laughs> The author really wrote this book with care. It is very, very in-depth and detailed. I feel like it took her like three or four years to write this book because it is so big, you know? It is, it's only this big, but it feels this big. This is another book I picked up because I heard it's gonna become a movie. Book five I read this month was Hashtag Girl Boss by Sofia Amoruso. I had ordered this book right after watching the show on Netflix, Girl Boss, starring Britt Robertson, because I love Britt Robertson, she is hilarious and adorable and a really good actress. This is the story of Sophia, who started a small account on eBay that grew into a huge company, a $250 million company, to which she is the CEO. I would recommend just watching the show on Netflix because it's hilarious, it pretty much follows the exact same story because it is the same story, and it's way more entertaining than the book. There were times in the book where I did feel like she was really motivating me to get stuff done in my life, to not just sit and wait for life to fall into my lap. Me, I just kept getting hung up on the repetitiveness of it. She kept saying, that she didn't expect her life to turn out this way, she didn't expect this to blow up, she didn't expect to be the CEO of this huge company. She stayed down to earth and wasn't like snooty about it or anything. She seemed like a regular person. I just felt the book was not entertaining and repetitive and I don't want my opinions to prevent anyone from reading it. I'm just saying what I got out of it. Another book I read this month that I didn't really like, but was the next book chronologically of the books I read, I Know You Know by Jillian McMillan. I have already posted a complete review of this book, but it does contain spoilers, so if you do plan on reading the book, don't watch the video. If you don't want to read the book, watch the video, because I pretty much summarized the book and all of my problems that I had with it. I really do want to read all of Jilly's books, I started collecting them, and I figured that I'd start with her newest one. And I did enjoy the detective's chapters because then they would flash back to 20 years before, and in the past it would be in italics. The book had so much potential for me, but the last like third of the book, it just was very disappointing. The second to last book I read this month was Confessions of a Shopaholic by Sophie Kinsella. In my previous video, me and Doug played a game where he read off these prompts and I kind of did a book scavenger hunt to find them. But when I first watched Becca and the book's video on this scavenger hunt and one of the prompts was find a book by a person who's writing under a pseudonym, I thought of this book because I was reading it. And then I couldn't find it because it was in the bedroom. I started this book in July and just now finished it because this book was so annoying that I did not want to keep picking it back up to read. There were so many times where I was like, just DNF it, you don't have to finish a book you don't like. So Confessions is about Becky. She has to spend money every day. She justifies all of these ridiculous purchases. I'm just like, girl, are you, are you kidding me? Are you serious? I have not seen the movie for this book, and I kind of want to watch the movie because I really like her. I thought it would be a cute read for when I was feeling extra girly or wanted to just pretend I was rich and wanted to go shopping so I would live vicariously through Becky and go shopping through her, but the book just annoyed me. And my eighth book I read this month was the second book that I actually enjoyed this month, Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Doug, my fiance, right? He recommended me this book a year ago. But third-person fantasy is not my shtick. 
I started it this month at a slow pace. I was like, I'm not really into this. This is interesting. This world is in depth, but I'm not really into this. And then something would happen and Citra would, you know, act all cool. And then I'd be like, all right, I'll keep reading. And I'm very, very glad that Doug urged me to continue and read this book and finish it because it did end up being really good. And also, if you read this and not noticed, this is a face. I won't go too much into the series because Doug is actually going to upload a video on my channel about it, but I will say that it was in depth and crazy and the politics, the rules, everything was just so... I need more adjectives in my brain. It was crazy, man. Though it is a book about death, the plotline felt kind of middle grade to me. So I'm moving around ghost. I will link Doug's video in the description below, so you should totally go check that out for more information on this amazing series. And those are all the books that I have to talk about for today. In the wise words of Tasha Bliss, keep calm and coffee on. Actually, she says fangirl on.